Each object model is a popular design pattern with files that represent each page of an application. In some cases, it is the entire page, and in other cases, it is parts of a page in the application. The purpose of the page object model is to serve as a pattern for the application we plan to test. Our elements and interactions are stored separately from the test scripts. Each web page or section of a page is represented by a page object. In this example, we see two web pages, login page and home page. Both pages have their own page object called login page and home page. By convention, the page object has the same name as the web page. The members inside of a page object are variables and methods. Variables are defined as elements of the page, while methods are implemented as interactions with those elements. When it comes to the test scripts, they have the ability to reuse a page object when it needs to interact with a page. That's why you see all three test scripts with an arrow pointing to each page object. The arrow indicates a call to the login page object and home page object. However, in this diagram, we do not see a base page and we do not see a base test because a base page and base test are not required. In this session, you will learn step-by-step step how to create a base page and how to create a file with test data. After creating test data, we will store the locators. Locators help us to find the elements and perform action on the elements. There is more than one way to store the locators. So I will show you two ways. Then we will transition to creating the page object files. Next is creating our base tests and creating the test files. Last is executing the page object model on three browsers, Chrome, Firefox, and Edge. All of the code will be on GitHub. What is and why is the page object model important? It is important because the design pattern helps with the dry principle. Dry stands for don't repeat yourself. This principle offers support by not repeating the same code over and over. The benefits of a page object model are code reusability, code readability, and code maintainability. You must make sure to not have the web driver APIs in your test. If they are in your test, then you are doing it wrong. That is a quote about the creator of Selenium Web Driver, Simon Stewart. Now, let's start by creating the base page. In the IDE, we will create three packages, pages, test, and utilities. To create a package, we are going to right-click the package PyTest Tutorials. And after right-clicking the PyTest Tutorials, we select New Python Package. Now, the name of the package is Pages. We're also going to create Test and Utilities. But when it comes to the pages package, it will contain the base page and page object files. Next, let's go ahead and create the package for test. Right click the project, new Python package, T E S T S. Test will contain our base test and test files. Last for this demo is utilities, new. Python package, and we write U-T-I-L-I-T-I-E-S for utilities. The base page is created by right-clicking the pages package, new 
Python file. Then write base underscore page. Now we're going to write class base page in a colon. Define the init method. Pass in self automatically and we write comma driver. Init is short for initializer and it is used to initialize a class. We see self because it represents an instance of the class. Driver will control our browser. Therefore, let's write self.driver equals driver. Now that we have the initializer, do you see the yellow line under base page? It is not required, but PyCharm wants us to insert the missing dot string. Let's add a comment that says the purpose of a base page is to contain methods common to all page objects. Every page object needs to find an element. So we're going to write DEF find self comma asterisk locator return self dot driver find element and asterisk locator. The asterisk before locator allows us allows the function to accept only keyword arguments, keyword only arguments such as by ID, by XPath, and by CSS selector, then the value. In addition to finding an element, we also click elements. Therefore, we define click, comma, locator. Self dot find. Now that I wrote self dot find, I'm going to write asterisk locator dot click. Notice how I called the find function, then dot click. Call and find help to not write self dot driver dot find element asterisk locator dot click. Now, recall the drop principle stands for don't repeat yourself. So we bypass repeating self dot driver dot find element over and over when we wrote find because we wrapped it and returned that information. Look at the difference between both lines self.find and self.driver find element. Calling the find function is less code and is more readable. Less code than line 14. So let me go ahead and comment this line. Next is to set the value into a field. That's the same as typing a value. I'm going to define, let's name this set and then pass in locator value. Sometimes the field can have existing information. So it is good to clear the information before sending the new information. Once again, we write self.find, pass in locator dot clear. Then self.find locator dot send underscore keys. Pass in the value to send keys. If there is no information, then send keys will only type the value. So this line here 
would not clear information if it's not any information to clear. With Selenium, we also get information, then verify the information. So let's define get underscore text. Pass in self and locator. Return self dot find asterisk locator dot text. Text is a method that gets information from the web application. How about we also get the title by writing def get underscore title. And for get title, I'm only going to use self as the parameter, but return self dot driver dot title. Let me show you more candidates that can be added to the base page. By going to the application, do you see this menu starting with shop by category, home, special, and blog, all the way to my account? These elements are candidates because they are constant on every page in this application. It's the same for the menu on the right side that directs us to a page. Those are candidates because every page has access to these elements, both menus. If I log into the application with pytestselenium at gmail.com and the password of at 1234pytestselenium, we're going to see at the top the same information same menu and on the right we also see that same menu it in so we can use the base page to include an action for both of these menus because it will prevent us from repeating the same action in all of the page objects let me show you by inspecting my account expand the a tag and we see my account. Now, if I go back to the menu, we're going to see edit account. And that is the next information with the A tag. I'm going to expand A tag and we see edit account. So we can create one method in the base page to click any page in this menu. So let me show you that part. Now, to show you that part, let's first create the value using XPath. So in the DOM, the ancestor for the right menu is A side, A side tag. And it has an ID value of column right. Notice my account has a space before the word. Okay, so let's write two forward slashes and a side, which is the tag name, square brackets, at ID equals two single quotes. Within the quotes, let's write the ID value, which is column hyphen right. Bingo. We see the yellow background. Two forward slashes, then write the a tag, and square brackets, T-E-X-T, -E parenthesis, equals single quotes. Within the quotes, let's add the space first because my account and edit account had a space before the word. Then write the text, which is my account. Bingo. We found the word. Okay, so let me go ahead and change my account to edit account. And we also see the yellow highlight, which shows we found the element. Copy this value. Go back to the IDD and define click right underscore menu page. Pass in self. Let's also pass in page name. Page equals by 
X path and I'm gonna paste in the value. To make this X path dynamic, replace edit account with two quotes, two pluses. Within the pluses, write the parameter name, which is page underscore name, bingo. The last step is to write self dot click, then pass in page, which is the variable that has the X path value. Import by class. This method would click any page name we pass to the parameter. Now, if you wanted to perform more actions on the page, like checking to see if the page is visible in the rights menu, then it's best to create a method that call the method, then call a method. For example, let me show you that part right quick. I'm going to define page, then pass in page underscore name. Return this information that we have for a page. Copy and paste. And let me remove the page equals and only return by X path. Now, in the right click menu page, we write self dot click pass in self dot and the page name that we just created a method for. And within that, we write page underscore name. So what we just did with this row 29, we're calling this method, which is page. So for this demonstration, we are performing only one action, and that is to click the right menu page. So let me come in at this row 29. But what it's doing is calling this row 33. So we could have wrote it this way with only row 29. And that performs the same information. But like I mentioned, we're only performing one action of clicking the method. So we can go ahead and have this other information that I come into that. But I'm going to come in out row 29 because I want to show you another way to do the same thing. And since it's only performing one action, let me make a comment for people who may want to go to GitHub and see this information. The comment is going to say below method allows us to click, click the page. Check if page is visible and more actions. So on a project, I would actually call this method because I may perform more than one action on that right side menu. That's it for creating a base page. Next, we're going to create the test data. By going to the application, the data will be email, password, and URL. So let me log out of the application. Then click my account login so I can copy the URL. For the utilities package, we right click new Python file, name is test underscore data. The class will be test data. URL equals, so after writing this part, all we need is to paste in the URL information. After the URL is the email. And the email is podtest selenium at gmail.com. After email is 
password. Bingo. And the password is at one, two, three, four, pod test, Selenium. Now we have access to this test data. Whenever the project needs the URL, email, and password. That's it for creating the test data. Next is to store the locators. I will show you how to store locators, the traditional way and the other way of using the utilities package. The reason why I prefer to show you more than one way, so you can decide which way you want to implement your approach. So let's go back to the browser real quick. To log into the application, we need the email address field, password field, and the login button. There will be two test scripts for this page. Log in with good credentials and try to log in with bad credentials. Type anything into the email address field. Type anything into the password field, then click login. We see this warning message. And it says warning, no match for email address and or password. With this warning, our login page needs four locators. Email address, password, login button, and the warning. So let's create the login page object by right-clicking pages, new Python file. The name, login underscore page. Next is to write the class, which is login page. The base page is the super class, which is also known as the parents class. Import base page. For the locators, we're going to write email underscore address field equal to blank in the parentheses. Next is password field. After password, login button. Last is the warning underscore message. Now let's get the values for these locators. Let's start with email. Right click so I can inspect. And the ID value is input hyphen email. Let's inspect password. That ID value is input hyphen password. Cool. Let me scroll and now inspect login button. And it does not have an ID value attribute. So let's use the value attribute, which contains login. Let me scroll up the DOM and search for the ancestor. The ancestor has an ID value of content. Okay, so we have that information. Now let's find the element. Two forward slashes, div at ID equals content. Bingo. Now, two forward slashes, input at value equals login. Okay, so let me copy this value. Let's also inspect the warning. The warning has no ID attribute, but it only has a class attribute, and a class attribute has more than one value. It has alert, alert hyphen danger, alert hyphen dismissible. I'm going to use alert hyphen danger, but let's also see what the parent tag has. We need that ID value, which is account hyphen login. Let's use CSS selector this time and locate the element with hashtag account hyphen login. 
Bingo. The hashtag is a shortcut symbol for ID. The shortcut for class is the dot. And we are going to look for alert hyphen danger. Okay, now we found the element in Patron. The email address field is located by ID and a value that it had was input email. Import op op the by locator. Now for the password field, it's located by ID with a value of input hyphen password. The login button was located by XPath. And let me paste in that value, bingo. Last is the warning message. And it was located by CSS selector with a value of hashtag account hyphen login dot alert hyphen. I believe there was danger. And I believe that's the right information. Okay, so now, okay, this is the traditional way to store locators inside of the page object file. Let me show you another way of storing the locators inside a utilities package. First, we're going to walk through the third test strip so we know which locators to store. Log into the application with a good email of PyTest Selenium. Let me copy this first information of PyTest Selenium at 1234 PyTest Selenium. After logging into the application, the test script will click password. Then try to change the password by entering a password like ABC123. That does not match the confirmed password of XYZ123. We need four like locators, password field, password confirm, the continue button, and the error message. The error message says password confirmation does not match password. Okay, so let's add all of them to the utilities package. Right click the package, new Python file. Name is locators. from selenium.webdriver.common.by, we're going to import the by class. This class inside of the locators file will be called change password locator fields. The first field is password. And for now, I'm going to have an empty value. Confirm password is a second field. The third field is continue button. After continue button, we have the confirmation. Error message. All right, there we go. At this point, let's get the values for these locators. Inspect password. And the ID value is input hyphen password. Inspect password confirm. It has an ID value of input hyphen confirm. Inspect the continue button. And it does not have an ID value, but a value of attribute containing continue. So the value attribute contains continue. Let's find 
the ID value for, from his ancestor. And we see div has an ID value of content. Okay, so now that we have that information, let's find the continue button by writing two forward slashes div square brackets at ID equals content. Bingo. Now for the button. Input value equals continue. There it is. Bingo. I'm going to copy this value. Then go back to the IDE and locate the password field by ID with the value of input hyphen password. The confirmed password field is located by ID with a value of input hyphen confirm. Now for the continue button, it was located by X path, but I would paste that value. Next is the confirmation error message. Let's inspect. And the div tag does not have an ID attribute, but it have text danger as the value for the class attribute as the only class value. Let's find the ID value from its ancestor. And it also has content for the div tag. So to find this element, let's use CSS selector by first starting with the hashtag content space text hyphen danger. There we go. Now we found the element. I'm going to copy the value, go back to the IDE. The locator was found by CSS selector, comma, within the quotes, paste the value. Okay, so that's it for the locators file inside you for the locators inside the utilities package. Next, we're going to create methods in our page object files. Since the base page is the superclass for the page object files, we're going to initialize a call to the superclass. So for the login page, we see base page as a superclass. The call is going to be for the initializer. Therefore, we define the init method. Self and pass in driver. Let me hover the init method. Can we see that brown background? And look what it shows to. Look what it shows. It's telling us to add the superclass. So let me click this link for superclass. And we see super two underscores init underscore driver. That's a call to the superclass, which is the base page. At this point, the login page object has complete access to the methods in the base page. It has access to all of the methods in the base page. The first locator is email address field. Watch what happens when I define set email address, pass in self and email underscore address. Let me bring this up some. Self dot provides access to the base page. The IntelliSense shows methods from the base page. We see the driver, we see page, email address field is from the login page, but we also see set from the base page, click writes menu page from the base page, click from the base page, get title from the base page, get text from the base page and the find method. We need the set method 
from the base page. Then the locator, which is self.email underscore address underscore field. Email address is the argument containing a value that will be sent to each field. This statement saves us from typing more characters and the code is more readable. Recall I said the base page is not required, but look at the statement without using the base page. We would have to write self dot driver dot find element then pass in the locator, which is email address underscore field. Dot send underscore keys. Then pass in email address. Do you see how this statement in line 17 is so much longer? That's why I use the base page because it helps our code to be more readable and it's shorter. Okay, so let me comment line 17. I just use it here as a reference and you can see and compare it to both to the other statement. Next is the password. So let's define set underscore password, pass in self and password. Let's write self dot set. In the self.password field, we enter the password. So far, we have set the email address and we have set the password. Now we click the button by defining click login button. Self dot click, then pass in the locator, which is login button. Let me show you a statement that is missing from many page object design patterns. Clicking the login button is a transition method because the page transitions from one page to another. In the application, let me first log out. Then I'm going to my account, log in. When you're clicking the log in button, you want to see what happens. When I enter an email address, password of at a rate, one, two, three, four, Pate Selenium. Soon as I click the log in button, the page transitions from the log in page to the my account page. Therefore, our page object model file should reflect the same change in our project by creating a class file called my account. And let me show you how we create a transition method. I'm going to first right click the pages package, new Python file, and create a file called my underscore account underscore page. It's going to have a class called my account page. And it will also inherit base page. So let me import base page. We are not performing any actions on the my account page. So let's write pass, which means the class will not have any code. Therefore it is empty. So going back to the login page object. We saw how clicking the login button transitions to my account. So our method will return the my account page, then pass in the dropper and import my account page. In this page object, we can log into the application because it has methods to set the password, set the email, and click the login button. If you want to, you can also create a convenience method, which combines more than one action into one method. 
For example, let's define log into application. And we're going to pass in self, email, and password. Then call all three methods. The first method is self dot set email address. Then pass in email. Next is self dot set password. And the pass in password. Last step is self dot click login button. We have one more method for the login page, but let me show you right quick what I call. First, for the convenience method is setting email address, which is the call at line 28. Then we have line 29 that calls this method for set password. Finally, click login button is called at line 30. This is the convenience method because it combines more than one method into one action for logging into the application. Let's go to the application. Let's go back and see the one more thing that we need and it's getting the text from the application. And recall the base page has the get text method. And know what, rather than going back to the application, let me just go ahead and create the method because we went over that already. And I'm going to define get warning message, pass in self, and return self.get text, then pass in the locator, which is the warning message. That's it. And now this here method will get the warning message. Next is the change password page object. Let's create that one by going to the pages package, right click, new Python file. The name is change underscore password underscore page. In this file, the class is called change password page. Base page is the super class. Import base page. All right. Now we must define the initializer by writing DEF two underscores init. The locators are not in this file. So let me go to the utilities package, which is the locators file in the utilities package. And in this file, we have change password locator fields as the class. We need the same class name. So let me go back. And for the change password, we write self dot and write any name like locate equals the class name that I copied and now pasted. This statement provides access to all of the locators. Let me import the class. Bingo. Now we call it the super class by hovering init. Or we can write it out also, but it's easier to just go ahead and hover init and add super class. I prefer for the super class to be at the bottom. So let's cut that and paste it below LI9. Go to the application and we must enter the password, confirm password, then click the continue button. So let me go to that page and we see those elements, password, password confirm and continue button. Let's create a convenience method for those by defining change underscore password. Then I'm going to pass in password 
and then confirm password. Now, the three actions is self.set. And here's the difference between adding the locators in the page object file and adding them to the utilities package. When the locators are in the same file, we only write the locator name like password underscore field. Then the parameter password. If I hover this red line, we see the note says unresolved reference password field. Since the locators are not in this file, we must write self dot locate dot before password field. All right, the next statement is self dot set self dot locate dot and we see all four locators from the change password locators field class we see password field confirm password field continue button confirmation error message let's select password confirm field confirm password field we see those but we need to confirm password field and then we use the argument for confirm password. That's it. The last step is to click. And after we click the button, that will complete this. Okay, let me continue. Okay, write self dot click remove this underscore, and then we call the, by writing self.locate.continue button. And now we're finished. The next page after clicking the continue button is the my account field or the my account page. So therefore, like the previous transition method, we do the same for this transition method. We're going to return the my account page, then pass in self.driver. It's just like the other transition method that we created in the login page, where it returned my account. Because when clicking login button, it goes to the my account page. It's the same for this one. We click the continue button. If it's successful, it will go to the my account page. The last method for this page object is to define get confirmation error message. Okay. And we're going to return self dot get text, then pass in. confirmation error message. That's it for changing the password page object. We have finished creating all three page object files. Login page object, my account page object, and change password page object. Next, we're going to create the base test. Now, for the base test, we must go to the test package. Right click, new Python file. The name is base underscore test. The class is base test. In this base test, we need to set up each test and tear down each test. A PyTest fixture is perfect because it provides a way to execute generic steps over and over. Every test would have access to the PyTest fixture because it will be in the conftest.py file. So let's go to the conftest.py file right quick. And we have this initialize 
Dropper pie test fixture. It was created in video six. The function sets the starting values and closes the dropper. It accesses Chrome, Firefox, or Edge if the request param is Chrome, Firefox, or Edge. Then create an instance for the required browser. At the end, the fixture shows driver.close at line 16. We need this information for our base test. The purpose of a conf test.py file is to provide a pytest fixture for any test function. So before the reserve word yield, let's load the application by writing driver.get, then call testdata.url, also import test data, and writing this information inside the conftest.py file will not cause a problem for anyone who wants the code from GitHub. It's going to load this file the same we did for video six, but it's not going to cause a problem because it's just loading the page. And let me go back to when I did for video six to show you the difference. Because there was demo, pod test, test parameters, underscore two, where I call the initialized driver. And it's testing that the header is going to be Selenium Playground when loading this application at line 10. So it's not going to cause a problem. Now, for yield, it transfers execution to the test code. The test code will log in to the application with good credentials, try to log in with bad credentials, and try to change the password. So after yield, it's going to close the driver. Now, let's also maximize the window after loading the application with driver dot maximize window. Bingo. Now, let's go to the base test. And in the base test, we're going to call the fixture by writing at podtest dot mark dot use fixtures. Then the name initialize underscore driver. And I hope I spelled it right. Let me import podtest. And let me see right quick and go back to make sure. Let me just copy it and go back and paste it because I think I did it right, but I'm not completely sure. Bingo, it's right. Now, the base test will be empty. So we're going to write pass. That's it for creating the base test. Now it is time for our Selenium test scripts using PyTest. We create the test files by right-clicking the package of test. And once we right-click the package of test, like always, new Python file. This file will have two test functions. Test underscore login is the name of the file, which is called a module. And one test function will be testing the valid credentials and the other function would test invalid credentials. Let's walk through those steps again, just to kind of go over it. In the application, AUT, we're going to log out right quick. And on this login page, we're going to enter email address, pytestselenium at gmail.com, then a password. Once I click the login button, our test is going to verify if the title is my account. Let's log out and log back in. Because the second test 
is going to enter an email and a password that are not good, then insert the warning message. No match for email address and or password. So that's it for our test group test script for logging into the application. Let's start with the class called test login. Base test is the parent class. Import base test. Define test for valid credentials. Let's create an instance for the login page. Then pass in self.driver and assign it to login underscore page. Import login page. At this point, we implement each step. So on the login page, we set the email address with information from the test data file by calling email. Let me also import test data. Next from the login page is to set the password called test data password to complete the process from the login page is click login button. Now we have logged into the application. Our test script has logged into the last two steps must get the title and assert the title. So we write login page dot get title, then assign the value to actual title. Assert actual title equals my account. Let's run from the editor and see what the run window shows us because we'll finish with the first test. The console should show three passed, even though it's one function to test. It shows three because we're testing on Chrome, Firefox, and Edge. Chrome has finished with the green check mark. Firefox has finished with the green check mark. Now we see Edge has finished with a green check mark. The console shows three pass with print statements for each browser. We see browser Chrome, browser Firefox, and browser Edge for each browser. For the next test script, let's write DEF to define testing invalid credentials. Login page self.driver and also assign this to login page. The login page allows us to use the convention method. So we write login page and login to application is what we're going to call from the login page object. Since the credentials would be invalid, I will use hard-coded data of invalid email and invalid password. After the invalid credentials, the page returns a warning message. So the actual message is from the login page. 
will get the warning message. Then assert the actual message. Let's write contains. Warning. Let's run both test scripts from the terminal. So let me go to the terminal and I'm going to write PyTest test and run. And I might speed up the recording so we can just bypass the execution part. This command that we wrote for PyTest test, execute every test script in the test package. That's why we see six pass. There are two test functions, but each executed on Chrome, Firefox, and Edge. The same test will pass when we run at the class level. So let me go up and run from the editor. The console should show test valid credentials and test invalid credentials. And all of the browsers should have a green check mark. And once again, I may speed up the recording so we can go ahead and get to the test results. Okay, so now I see something that is not expected. Chrome failed. And I'm not sure why Chrome failed. So let's see, it shows actual message, login page, get warning message. And it shows using by value and execute response. Let me see, because that is strange how these pass and that one didn't. So let's let's run that again, because that is strange on how it showed not pass. I'm just going to run it by itself. Yep, that's strange because this time it passed. Maybe something happened with. Okay, so know what? I'm going to run it again from the class level. And while I'm running that, let's walk through the last test script, which will get an error message. So I'm going to run again just to make sure things are going right. And we'll see if it passed or not. So from the third test script, we're going to first log into the application with pytestselenium at gmail.com. So let me come here and enter valid credentials, pytestselenium at gmail.com. And the password, which would be at 1234, PyTest Selenium and log into the application. Now, when we log into the application, we're going to click password. And both of these passwords will have a mismatch. So I'm going to enter a different value for password that I enter for password confirm. And we see this error message shows password confirmation does not match password. I'm going to copy this value and go back to the IDE. And while I, before I do that, we see how this time all six pass. I just want to run it again so you can see. And also I see that it passed. I'm not sure why Chrome failed the first time in execution from the editor. So now I copied the message. Let's go ahead and write the steps. So we're going to write the steps for changing the password. And to do that, I'm going to first create the package by right-clicking test, new Python file. The name of the file will be test underscore change underscore password. The class is test change 
password. Inherit the base test. Also in import the base test. Define the method by writing DEF test changing password. And I must spell it right. Now, pass in self. For this test, we need to create an instance for two of the page objects. Login page is one of the page objects passing self dot drop assign it to login underscore page. And the second instance is change password. If I can spell it right, change password page self dot driver. We're going to assign that to the same name, change password page. Also imports login page, import change password page. On that change password page, the expected message is password confirmation does not match password. The first step from the login page is to set the email address. Use test data by calling email. Import test data. Next is next step is login page dot set password. And I'm going to pass in test data dot password. Then login page dot click login button. Recall the transition from login page to my account to get the benefit of having that transition method. We can assign it to my account page. And by assigning it to my account page, it helps us to not worry about creating another instance. On the my account page, we click the right menu page and that page name is password. Now, you see how I'm calling right click, click right menu page, and that was created from the base page. But since my account page inherits the base page, it allows our test, my account page to call click right menu page. After clicking, password, our test script is located on the change password page. At this point, we call the change password method to enter the invalid password and invalid confirm password. That's when the actual message is returned from change password page and our test script get the confirmation error message. Bingo. Now, we're going to assert the actual message equals the expected message, which is password confirmation does not match password. Let's run from the terminal. And let me bring this up some. We're going to write the same command, pytest test. And it should collect nine items. Yes, nine items. 
all three test functions on three browsers. Three times three is nine. And once again, I may go ahead and fast forward the recording and speed it up so we can go ahead and get to the test results. Bingo. That's how you implement the page object model using Selenium with PyTest step by step. We have created a base page, we created a test data file, and created three page object files. Also stored the locators in the page object file and the utilities package with the locator's name as the file. Then we transitioned to the base test, which made a call to the PyTest features with three browser parameters, Chrome, Firefox, and Edge. Last, we executed three test scripts on all three browsers. Next is generating reports in PyTest. If you would like to learn more, then make sure to follow the blogs at www.lambdatest.com forward slash blog and community.lambdatest.com. If you want to read more about the blogs, in addition, you can earn a certification at www.lambdatest.com forward slash certifications. Get educated, get recognized.